Welcome to your weekly astrological weather. This is your place to get practical guidance for not only surviving, but thriving with the cosmic tides. This podcast is brought to you by The Inner Circle, your place to learn astrology in community with the masters and transform your life in the process. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to your weekly astrological weather. I am so happy that you've decided to tune in for the week ahead. And actually, this week, we have something very special. Well, we have a couple things very special. Number one, we have the one, the only, the legend, Rick Merlin Levine, who is going to be our astrologer covering not only one week, but the next two weeks. So Rick's going to take us through to the end of the year. And you see that he came dressed for the occasion and dressed for the theme um, because we are moving into, I'll let him tell you about the theme and why he said. Well, it's a new year. It's a new year's Eve party. It's not, we're, we're not talking about the weeks ahead. Yes. We're talking about the years behind we're out of here this is it okay we'll we'll spend the time and we'll trudge through the mud on the way to the party but we're heading for a party and by the time we're done with the party it's 2023 baby all right i want one of those rick that is gorgeous i love it it's so much fun um okay so we will be going into the the weather here very very shortly i just wanted to let you all know that our new reading platform astrologer connect is open. The only people that have access to it right now are the ones who attended our 2023 forecast event. But if you're interested in getting a reading for yourself or get gifting a reading to someone in your life, make sure you get on the wait list because we will be opening up spots as they become available. So go to astrologyhub.com slash readings, check out our awesome all-star cast of astrologers and um, just make sure you get on the wait list so you're first to know when we are open for more readings. And Rick, let's start. Let's talk about the astrology for the last two weeks of 2022. I, I, I can't do it in costume. I have to. <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's one thing to have fun. Yes. It's another thing to uh, be a serious astrologer. Let's get and down you, to business. And you know yes. how serious I am. About so serious. Every, everything everything yeah you know it's kind of it's kind of an interesting couple of weeks i mean first of all um just as a matter of record we're doing this a little bit out of context because we're recording this at the end of november and and normally we do the week ahead and so we have a couple of weeks in between today and what we're actually talking about And it just adds to the fact that this is a really special event because it does lack a little bit of continuity. And yet the end of the year should have some uh, should have some lack of continuity. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that many um, viewers know that the Romans had a special way of celebrating the end of the year and it was called the Saturnalia. And so here we are with um, planets in Capricorn. The sun is still lagging in um, Sagittarius, um, but it moves into Capricorn very quickly. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, And so we have a bunch of planets in in Capricorn that will then be moving into Aquarius. Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn and Aquarius. And to the Romans, these days between Christmas and and what we call the new year, um, were basically off the calendar. They were they were party days. There were days when there were role reversals. There were days when you know when when the um, peasants gave you know gifts to the wealthy. Everything was turned upside down, um, and it was certainly a party day. Hence our grand finale or great celebration or whatever it is. But of course, if we're looking at the astrology, we're celebrating something else. And that is we're celebrating the end of March 2020. Now, many people say, what the hell is he talking about? But many of us know that March of 2020 
was like the the month that never ended. It, it was like everything got suspended because of what some people call the pandemic of COVID. I call it the pandemic of fear of which COVID was the main symptom. But the fact, whatever you want to call it, it's okay with me. The fact is that March of 2020 never really came and went. It just came. And there are people who even today are still living in the tail end of March of 2020, afraid to go out, afraid to, you know, I don't know, it's, it, the fear is 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 still rampant everywhere. But I really think that as we push toward the end of the year, there's a couple of astrological shifts that are significant. And then beyond that, into early 2023, there are a number of other shifts that will move us quickly away from what I'm fondly calling March of 2020. But what we really mean is the Saturn Pluto conjunction followed by the Jupiter Pluto conjunction followed by the Saturn Uranus square all stretched out over a two year period. And for years, I know you've been getting this too, Amanda. When I say for years, I actually mean for um, two years. Uh, every month, people say, when is this going to end? When is this going to end? When are things going to return to normal? Well, I don't know that things will ever return to normal because I don't think they were normal when we look back and think they were normal. And that's what we want to return to. Regardless, I think that that there is a shift. People, Many people already recognize it wherever you are in your personal life. It seems that November has already been, I mean, there have been a number of turning points a, along the way, but November has already been a little bit of a marker of we're leaving something behind and we're moving into some new game, some new territory, some new dynamic. We don't know exactly what it is. We don't know how it'll play out. It'll still have a lot of the crap that we're bringing forward from the old um, but it won't be March of 2020 anymore. And therefore, it makes me want to celebrate. <laughs> We're right there with you. Um, Rick, in terms of it being a different flavor of energy that we're moving into, would you say that it's it's as intense, less intense, the same amount of intensity? How would you categorize it? Oh, I'm so bad on multiple choice. I'd go all of the above. <laughs> I, I, um, no, I, I, I think I think things will be less intense on a grand spectrum. That doesn't mean we won't have issues of high intensity. Right. But I think in an overall look, just looking at where we are on the planet and looking at the trajectory from whatever direction you choose to look at it things can't get less intense because because the energies have been building and again this is this is what's the right word um uh, uh beyond i hate to use the word meta um just because but it this is beyond astrology this is outside of astrology although the astrology corroborates it and fits into it you know, the fact is that as a culture, as a civilization, as an evolving planetary consciousness, we've never been here before. And it's not like just another year or just another decade. The amount of change is so dynamic. And even though for the past couple of years, it seems like maybe we were stuck and there wasn't as much change. Well, you know, when anyone who's had kids knows that they don't grow in an even kind of um, sense that we have growth spurts. And the same is true in any sort of psychological development, in any sort of technical development. And in some ways for a couple of years now, we've been in a bit of what a psychologist might call latency. Even though there's been so much going on, it's like our energy has been siphoned off, sucked off, sapped away, dealing with so many things. And now, as some of those things are just kind of settling a little bit, even if they're not settling into a place where we would like them to be settled into, it's just like there's a bit of 
maybe we can maintain the status quo now for a bit, which gives us more energy to put toward those changes that have been building that we haven't seen. So the intensity of 2023, and really we're getting a bit of a flavor of it in the last couple of weeks of, of December, kind of as a fractal seed for what will unfold in 2023, part of the intensity is how much new energy we're going to be experiencing, mm. which I know is crazy. It's like some some people could say, how could we experience more new energy than we've experienced over the couple, last couple of years? And all I can say is, um, I don't know, but we will. You know, it's interesting. I feel that 2020 and 2021, a little less 2022, but there was a lot of sort of shocking energy. Like it, it was like, things would happen that were just like, whoa, how is that happening? Is that actually happening? Is this real? It was, it was a lot of disorientation, I feel, that was happening. And it sounds to me like we're still in a period of change and, and, and actually maybe even accelerated change, but that it might not be as like where you feel like your whole world just got turned upside down and everything is 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 backwards. Yeah, well, look, we we've been in an extended period of time with Neptune at, and and um in Pisces in its modern domicile. For the last year in and out, we've had um Jupiter kind of maybe Jupiter could be considered to be Neptune's baby brother or something, you know. That those two planets have a great deal of of affinity. In fact, I see the affinity, um, and this is not based upon any specific tradition, but there's pieces in there. I see the affinity going from Venus to Jupiter to Neptune. You know, Neptune is considered to be the higher octave of Venus. Um, Venus is, I love you. You know, Neptune is, you know, there's a difference. Neptune is not individualized and personal, and it doesn't necessarily have touch. Neptune is agape. It's Peter Max, for those of you who know the, you know, the psychedelic posters of the 60s and 70s, where you had the rainbow and the unicorns running across the plains, and you had L-O-V-E, all you need is love to be. That's, that's Neptune. That's not the nitty gritty of Venus of being in the trenches and, you know, and being involved in a one on one, um, you know, personal um, and perhaps intimate relationship. And so with Jupiter and Neptune, both in Pisces, we've been spaced out more than we usually are. And by the end of the month, remember, Jupiter had moved into Aries just as a little bit of a taste and then it backed into Pisces again. And um, and now it's turned direct um, on December 19th, on Monday the 19th, Jupiter is at 29 degrees and 56 minutes. You know, that's like four minutes to midnight. You know, um, it's like it's like 29 degrees Pisces and 56 minutes. It's like it's, it's like right at the tail end. It's one fifteenth of a degree from being at the starting point of the Zodiac. And so when Jupiter moves into Aries, when it did last time, it was just the getting its feet wet and giving us a flavor. Now, once Jupiter moves into Aries, it ain't moving back into Pisces for another 11 years. So this is the beginning of a whole new cycle. And, um, and Jupiter whizzes through Pisces by, by May. It's on into Taurus. And so we're getting some real sweeping energy into, into the new cycle. And even though that that change doesn't occur until um, um, until December twentieth, well, that'll be um, uh, Tuesday. Yeah, that'll be Tuesday of, of I guess this week. It's weird being a couple of weeks out. Um, that Jupiter moves into Aries in a way. These last couple of weeks of the year are going to feel like the first couple of weeks of next year. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like we're starting next year a couple weeks early. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like we're getting um a, um a, a premature promotion into 2023. <laughs> um, and yet what's what's odd is that we still have Neptune lagging behind in Pisces. We still have Mars retrograding, and Mars 
um, has retrograded uh, back through a square to Neptune, but it won't be until March of next year when Mar Mars is moving direct that it'll make that third and final square to Neptune as Mars is moving direct. And so I'm thinking that although we get a taste of the clarity in these couple of weeks, we get a taste of what 2023 is. We maybe have some excitement about some of the things that are coming up. We don't get it for real until March, April, when a number of planets are now changing um, signs, um, in, including um, uh, Saturn moving from Aquarius, where it's been um, in a Saturn ruled. Saturn is at home in Aquarius. It's been there for a couple of years. And a couple of years prior to that, it was in Capricorn, also a Saturn ruled sign. So by March of 2023, Saturn is now leaving that whole um, heaviness that we had beginning, um, you know, with the um, uh, first COVID uh, um, information releases back in January of 2020. Um, and so we're getting some real movement forward, but we still have Mars retrograde right now. And on top of that, we have Mercury turning retrograde on the 29th of December. It's almost like how close can we get to the new year before we scream, don't make me go there? <laughs> because, um, be, be, because Mercury, having moved into Capricorn, and I want to back up in a, in, a, in a minute and talk about this whole movement from Sagittarius to Capricorn that we're already uh, deep into. Um, but, but Mercury spends an, an extraordinary amount of time in Capricorn, like Mars is spending a crazy amount of time in Gemini. Mars's retrograde extends that Gemini period for months. For Mercury and Capricorn, it's just weeks. Normally, Mercury moves through a sign in two weeks. Um, but the, the, the fact is um, that um, Mercury moved into... Um, Whoop, there, I'm, I've got a little chart here going and it just ran away without me. There it goes. So Mercury um, moved into Capricorn uh, on December 6th and it turns retrograde the, um, the end of the month, like I said. Um, it turns retrograde um, on the uh, 29th. And that turns it turns retrograde at 24 degrees of Capricorn. And it retrogrades all the way back to eight degrees of Capricorn, where it turns direct on January 18th, but it doesn't move out of Capricorn until mid-February. So we have a weight of Capricorn energy as if the universe or the cosmos is saying, yes, we know you humans are impatient. Yes, we know that Mars has turned direct. Well, Mars turns direct the first week of January. Um, so Mars is retrograde still, but we're nearing the end of the Mars retrograde period. We're getting antsy. We want forward movement. And into this, all of a sudden, Mercury goes, uh, no, we, 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 uh, back, back, back. And it's like, oh, and so we're we're not quite there, but there's too much energy that has been building like the bow has been pulled back, back and back. And even though now Mercury turns retrograde and we have to pull that bow back a little bit more, it's like our muscles are tiring, weak, tiring. We can't hold it much longer. And it's going to release and we're going to move forward. And that's the exciting thing about what's coming around the corner. And so we're feeling some of that, um, that energy um, these days, like, like right now. Um, we're going to start out here on, um, on Monday, December 19th. And like I said a few minutes ago, um, even though the sun is in the last degrees of, um, of, of Sagittarius um, and the sun actually um, moves into Capricorn 
and that denotes the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere, the summer solstice in the southern hemisphere. And um, and I've had arguments or discussions with people as to whether it's solstice or solstice. And the dictionary has both take your choice, tomato or tomato. Um, but um, on the 19th, on Monday, the moon is in Scorpio. And that moon in Scorpio is making sextiles with Venus and Mercury and Pluto and Capricorn. And Scorpio and Capricorn is an interesting sextile because it's heavy. It, it's not a lightweight, it's not a lightweight energy um, at, at all. And so we're kind of feeling that energy um, on the 19th as a background. And, um, and the other thing is that, um, is that on the 19th, there's a bunch of other noise going, going on. Venus forms a square with Chiron on the 19th. And so we might run into some issues around maybe someone not forgiving us or us not forgiving them. There's some a little bit of noise around trying to make something right that isn't quite quite getting there. Venus is certainly highlighted, but between its square to Chiron and its quincunx to Mars, it's like <laughs> Yeah, I just did this. It's like I can hear the chalk on the on on the chalkboard, and it's like I want everything to be pretty and nice in the celebrations and whatever. But it's like no, nope, something's not letting me quite go there. It's not, yeah, it's not quite right. Now, having said that, Mars does make a sextile with Chiron, and so there is some forward movement. And there's also a bunch of quintiles. And for those of you who follow my work, you know that quintiles are often associated with magic. Um, they're not always easy, but they're charismatic, they're magical, they're, they're, they're expressive, they're Venusian, they can be beautiful. And on December 19th, we get a whole slew of them uh, between Mercury, Jupiter, and Mars. We get this magical three points on a five-pointed star. And so I think the 19th starts off a bit tough, but as the day progresses, we find a way to to um, to to really make it nice. We have Jupiter moving into Aries, and Jupiter moves into Aries on um, on Tuesday the twentieth. Right behind that, we have the Sun moving into Capricorn, and as and and because Aries and Capricorn are square, as they both change signs on the twentieth. They both change signs. Um, first, Jupiter moves into, into Aries, and then the sun moves into Capricorn. Um, for some people, that'll be on Wednesday, the 21st. That'll be the solstice. There's a square between Jupiter and the sun, which is about over-exuberance, overdoing, huh, over-celebrating, party day. Um, there couldn't be a better day for a sun square Jupiter with one exception. And that exception is we pay the price when we over party. And, and this is a year because of all of this where we, in fact, may over party. The fact is also that the moon moves from Scorpio into Sagittarius on the 20th. And on the 20th at 1112 p.m., um, these are Pacific times, with the moon moving into Sagittarius and Jupiter moving into Aries, the moon trines Jupiter, and this is again. It's it, it's. Who cares how hard a year it's been? Who cares what work I have to do later in the week? Yeah, let's go out. Let's let's go have a drink. Let's go bowling. I, whatever. I'm. That's not. Please don't make me go bowling. Um, but 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 all these things that might have to do with however it is you you normally celebrate. That's kind of what's going on. Um, on Tuesday, even into Wednesday. But on Wednesday, when the sun moves into Capricorn, I always think of the people say, how can it be that the sun moves into Capricorn and it's party time? Well, I think that Capricorn um, can party, but it has to party according to the rules. In other words, um, you and I have talked a bit about the Capricorn energy, um, often feeling safe when it's following rules. 
But the fact of the matter is Capricorn is really the partiest sign um, of the Zodiac, although you wouldn't know that from talking with many or most Capricorns. But when they get permission to, when it's that time of year, when they know it's safe, and when I say safe, I don't necessarily mean, or I don't only mean emotionally safe. I mean, when they have permission to, when they know it's okay to party, watch out for those Capricorns because they'll be the first to arrive and they'll be there when everyone else leaves. But, but so the moon moving into Sagittarius and the sun moving into Capricorn um, on the 20th, we have these um, um, amazing kind of uplifting and party days, but we're taking our partying rather seriously, especially because um, the sun in Capricorn is squaring Jupiter. If we have everything taken care of where it's okay to let go. Um, I would say that late in the day on the 21st on the Wednesday, that the moon actually moves into a opposition to Mars late afternoon, early evening in the United States. And we may find that our emotions run away with, um, with, uh, with, with our actions. We may kind of just get into something a little bit too deep. And in fact, later in the evening, the sun makes a square and a half with Uranus. And so uh, late on the night of the 21st, um, there may be some disruption of some sort um, that we're dealing with either at home or maybe even on a, on a political or, or global global scenario. So that's Wednesday. On Thursday, the 22nd, um, early in the morning, and we're feeling this already on Wednesday, Venus makes a trine with Uranus. This again, it's not so much it's party time. It's time to do something different. It's time to um, it, it, it's a time when your friends can talk you into doing shit you wouldn't normally do. It's a time when you might find yourself attracted to or simply wanting something that you never thought you would want or never had before. Um, and yet Venus trine Uranus is often um, a time of, of high adrenaline and excitement. And this is with us through Wednesday and Thursday, the 20, 21st and 22nd. And by later on the 22nd, um, by the evening of the 22nd, the moon, having moved through party animal Sagittarius, arrives in Capricorn. And now we have the sun and the moon and Venus and Mercury and Pluto all in Capricorn. That's five planets in Capricorn. And in fact, that leads us up to the new moon on Friday morning at 2.16 a.m. And that new moon on Friday morning, uh, and that 2.16 a.m. again is Pacific time. Um, so it's 5.16 a.m. in New York and um, and just after midnight, if you happen to be lucky enough to live next door to Amanda in Hawaii. This new moon in Capricorn um, is in, an intriguing new moon because it is square Jupiter. Remember, the sun has been square Jupiter. It's still only one degree away. The moon comes sweeping through that. The moon squares Jupiter. Um, again, these are Pacific um, Coast times. The moon squares Jupiter at 12, 13 a.m. just after midnight on Friday, um, uh, late Thursday night, early Friday morning. And then the new moon just a couple of hours later. Um, it's almost like, again, we want to follow the rules, but we're tempted to overdo, overexpand, overindulge. This is the theme again and again and again. And in fact, by later in the day, on Friday the 23rd, Jupiter forms a half square with Uranus. Now, this is something that's really been cooking, and I took it, I I, I used some words around this earlier without actually saying you know what what it is, but this is the growing Jupiter through doing things different. We're attracted um, this year towards not doing things the same way. We want to look at maybe every year for our entire lives, our parents, and then we have always made ham at a certain recipe for Christmas. And this year, you know, we decide to have, you know, Philly cheesecakes and or Philly, um, you know, um, uh, what is the steak sandwiches? Philly cheese steaks. 
Yeah, that's it. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, cheese I, cheese, cake. Cheese cake. Um, but there's also a steak. There's also some sandwich that's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Philadelphia cheese steak, I think. Oh, oh, whatever it is, I'm sure I'm going to piss off all the Philadelphians, <laughs> and I'm so sorry. Um, but um, uh, but at least I didn't run for senator in um, in in Pennsylvania without living there. Regardless, the fact of the matter is that um, I, I think we want to do things differently. We want to we we want to shake it up, and the more we can shake it up, the better it's going to be because part of what this holiday season is about is not doing everything the same old, same old way. Um, it's about breaking, breaking tradition. And that doesn't mean trashing tradition. It, I mean, in fact, we can break tradition with great respect and still honor the tradition and just do things slightly differently. You know what, Rick, it seems like a great opportunity to, upgrade tradition too you know that, that would be that would be a, a, a more capricornianly expressed sane way of doing it yes yeah i, I mean I've, I've felt that that pull for many holiday seasons now and as a capricorn i love the traditions i it's like it, it there's something about it that's so comforting and nostalgic and beautiful and there's certain things that we've always done that I'm like, why do we do that? It's just like, it's not even that fun or it does it, it's lost all its meaning or it's lost, you know, yeah. the inspiration. Well, so yeah. this may surprise people, but I actually um, love tradition also. And anyone who knows my chart knows that I have Jupiter in Capricorn. And so when all these planets move through Capricorn, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm into it. Me, well, you've you've upgraded many Christmas carols with your astrological. <laughs> Basically, Rick has gone through I don't even know twenty Christmas carols. No, I, 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 I a bunch. Rewritten but, but, them with an astrological lens, and they're awesome. But but this year we're going to be able because Mercury does turn retrograde during the holiday season, and I have to the town of or the song of O Little Town of Bethlehem. You know, oh Mercury uh, retrograde. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> so, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll maybe we'll get that played for you guys someday. Anyhow, that be- so that brings us to the to to uh Christmas weekend, um, to the 24th, um Christmas Eve day. And we have the moon still moving through Capricorn, which means that the moon will conjoin Venus and Mercury and Pluto um, all through the 24th. And so I think that we're going to have a lot of work to do on Christmas Eve day. Now, I know for many people, they do every year, but this is different. There's something about having to ha- having to make sure that things are in order for some reason more so than what we normally do. Um, we do have a midday um, Venus quintile Jupiter, which to me is just a magical aspect. I mean, that is, you know, again, uh, I'm, I'm trying to focus on some of the party aspects. Venus and Jupiter are the greater Jupiter, Venus, lesser benefics. And when they make a quintile between them, it's almost like Venus. It's, it's like Venus um, is getting Jupiter's permission um, to party even more. So I'm looking at the um, Christmas Eve uh, events um, as being quite significant. Um, as we get closer toward the evening, we also have Mercury sextile Neptune, and this allows us to bring in the the celebration that's based upon fantasy dreams. You know, it's the Christmas wish. Um, it's the you know make a wish and anything can happen kind of a thing with Mercury sextile Neptune. Um, and yet also we're not just off in playland because remember the moon moving through Capricorn started with a conjunction to the sun yesterday, um, the, the new moon. And then today on the 24th, the new moon conjoined Venus and Mercury. By the evening time, that moon in Capricorn will catch up with Pluto. And what that means is that we actually will have a moon-Pluto conjunction, which intensifies our emotions 
and can create a um, a great deal of volatility. Um, it's not it's not an easy one, but it doesn't last long. It, and it's late in the evening, so some people might already um, you know be be asleep for that period of time. But I, I think the day before Christmas, the twenty fourth, is overall it gets two thumbs up in my review for you know potential fun. Um, on Sunday, That's great, on because Christ- I remember a very different story last year. Remember Christmas Eve, Eve, December twenty third. That was the last about- of the Jupiter of, of the Uranus of the Saturn Uranus squares. Yes, and that was. I mean, the whole holiday season was basically covered. I, I mean, colored by that transit. And I know a lot of people had a very, very, very Difficult. intense. Christmas and New Year's and holiday season in general last year. So I'm happy to hear that this year, the energy feels a lot different. Well, we also have those planets in Capricorn. The moon does it on the 24th, but over the next day or two, Mercury um, makes a sextile with, um, with Neptune. Then Venus makes a sextile with Neptune. Then the sun makes a sextile with Neptune. It's om- and and then as um, three of the four planets um, move from Capricorn into Aquarius, they're all going to make sextiles with Jupiter. So we have some very sweet aspects coming up, um, including um, on Sunday is a pretty quiet day astrologically. Interestingly enough, it's much noisier on Christmas Eve day than it is on Christmas Day day. Can you do that? Christmas Day Day? Doesn't matter. Um, we do have the moon trine Mars mid-afternoon, um, and we have the moon uh, square Uranus later in the evening. So there's a little bit of action, but basically this is, there's, there's nothing hugely significant happening on the 25th or the 26th. Now on the 26th, because the moon has moved into Aquarius, um, the moon actually moved into Aquarius late on Christmas Eve at 11, 13 p.m. For some people, it won't be until Sunday on Christmas Day, early, very early in the morning. But as the moon moves through Aquarius, by Monday, the 26th, that moon will reach Saturn in Aquarius. And so we'll have a moon-Saturn conjunction, and that might be a little bit of post holiday i shouldn't have eaten so much i shouldn't have drank drank so much i shouldn't have had so much to drink i should have gone to bed earlier i spent too much money I, you make up your own story but the moon's um, the moon's conjunction to saturn mid morning on monday is certainly a bit of um hangover and i don't necessarily mean an alcohol hangover it's a good time hangover I don't mean it's a good time. I mean, it's a hangover from having too good of a time. All right. Um, By Monday evening at 11.33 p.m., again, Pacific time, the moon moves into Pisces and we get a bit of softening of the energy. There's not a lot else happening on Tuesday. We're kind of in a period of quietness. And as many people know, astrologically, when there is quietness, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are quiet because sometimes it's the quiet that allows the stuff that's been fomenting and and bubbling and, and in turmoil, but we don't get to express it on Christmas Eve because there's so much happy Jupiter, so much this, so much. And now all of a sudden we get a couple of days of a bit more quiet and um, and it's time for you know, the proverbial whatever it is to hit the spinning device that splatters it everywhere. (laughs) Um, No, and and I don't think it's quite as serious as having anything hit the fan. But I do think that by Tuesday, um, there is either a separation from the party energy um, and, and yet there's a quietness where stuff can come up. And some of the stuff can come up some of the stuff that can come up, interestingly enough, may be having to do with dreams and fantasy. Why do I say that? Because late 
on Tuesday night and or early Wednesday morning, depending where you are, Venus forms a sextile with Neptune. I talked about that earlier, that the planets would one by one make those sextiles to, to Neptune. And when Venus makes a sextile with Neptune, this is about a sweet fantasy. Um, this is, again, um, this is about a dream. And, um, and you know, dreams are, um, sometimes we're, we're, we, we get down on fantasy because it doesn't lead anywhere, or that's just a pipe dream, that's just a fantasy. But let's say that when Venus sextiles Neptune um, late on Tuesday, the 27th, and on into Wednesday, the 28th morning, um, that those dreams actually can lay a desire down for us to then want to make it real. Remember, a dream is illusory, but an illusion does not have to be untrue. It's tricky languaging. An illusion can manifest as truth. In fact, many of the most important events in our lives that manifest begin as illusions. They begin as dreams. So we can't just pass that off. Now, as a punctuation mark on that, by Wednesday mid-afternoon, the sun makes a half square with Saturn, and this is a bit of disillusionment. Now, for those of you who go, oh, bummer, I was lost in my fantasy and now I'm disillusioned, disillusionment is required if you're going to make a dream real. It's it, All it means is it takes the illusion out of the picture. And unfortunately, sometimes when the dreams of illusion precipitate into the three-dimensional world, Saturn, they're not as pretty as they were when they were dreams, but they're real. And so to be disillusioned with the reality of what our wish was is better than still being in an illusion. So that's kind of where Neptune's energy um, cooks. And because the moon moving through Pisces catches up with Neptune, I think Wednesday is a day of back and forth between fantasy, reality, fantasy, reality. And if we can be aware of that, and if we can work that energy, then we can make something of our fantasies. Meanwhile, we also have on um, Tuesday and Wednesday, we have Mercury slowing down, Mercury having reached 24 degrees of Capricorn, Mercury turning retrograde on Thursday, the 29th, beginning its three-week um, I always find it funny. I always want to say that it does the moonwalk, you know, because you know, I think of Michael Jackson walking backwards. So it's like Mercury does the moonwalk never sounds exactly right. <laughs> it sounds like confusing the images. But when Mercury looks like it's stepping backwards, this is a time to focus on those intellectual things that might not be making as much headway as we would have liked, because Mercury retrograde is far from a bad thing. Mercury retrograde should go out and hire a public relations firm so that it can clear up all the misconceptions about Mercury retrograde. Bummer. Don't buy a computer. Don't buy a car. Don't take an airplane trip. Don't go to the movies. Don't do this. Don't sign any contracts. God, it's retrograde for almost two and a half months out of the year. You know, um, three times three, like nine weeks a year or so, Mercury is retrograde. And and I know of people um, who some of the most important events in their life have occurred when Mercury is retrograde. Um, the thing is that when a planet is retrograde, and we I covered this pretty in pretty great detail in Astrology Foundations, which, as I know, most of us know, is still available you know, at, through Astrology Hub. But when a planet is retrograde, it looks like it's going backwards, like Mars is right now in the sky, but it's not really going backwards. It's an optical illusion because we lose our perspective because we're close to it. And therefore, um, it, 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 it looks like it's moving backwards against the backdrop, um, but it's not. However, what it is, is that it's closer to Earth than it is at any time in its normal cycle. 
So when Mars is retrograde, Mars is close to Earth. And in fact, over these next couple of weeks, if you go out and look at Mars in the nighttime sky, it's as bright as it ever gets. Why? Because we on Earth are on the same side of the sun as Mars. And in fact, we're in a close line so that if you draw a straight line from the sun to the Earth and to Mars, it looks like Mars and the sun are in opposition, and they are. But we're all on the same side of the sun, so we're close to Mars as we normally can get. So Mars is bright, and Mars is like all planets are like radio stations. Mars is anger. People are getting angrier, easier than they normally do when Mars is close to Earth. You know, um, uh, countries yell at each other and send more nasty messages and people say meaner things and people start boundary wars and people actually create fighting, even though there's rarely, if ever, a time when there's not a war or fighting going on on the planet. When Mars is retrograde, whatever it is that's going on heats up even more. And we are certainly seeing some of, of, of that. Um, but when Mercury retrogrades, um, as it will um, starting uh, the end of um, uh, on Thursday, the end of the month on Thursday, December 29th, what happens is that our mental processes heat up because Mercury, the planet of mental, the, the planet of, of language, the planet of interactive communication becomes more active. And what that means, it's like everything happens interactively like we're in rush hour. And in rush hour, strange things happen. We get stuck on freeways and we run out of gas because we didn't know we'd be stuck on the freeway for four hours. Or during rush hour, if you think of rush hour in the phone system, in the old days, there were wires that carried all the messages back and forth. Obviously, we're wireless now. But during rush hour, when the phones got busy, the wires could heat up and they could burn, fray. Um, during rush hour, um, a bridge might even collapse because of the weight of the bridge. So what? So Mercury retrograde is not bad. It just intensifies communication and it shows us where our communication links may be weak. You know, they say it during Mercury retrograde, don't sign a contract. That's such bullshit. What it really means is that during Mercury retrograde, we're so excited that when we get the contract, we don't read it. We just sign the damn thing. Done. And yet, if you'd taken the time to read it like you would normally do when you got a contract, you go, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. This isn't good for me. And you'd negotiate it and you'd take it out if need be, and then you'd sign the contract. So when the, the bad decisions that we make when Mercury are retrograde, when Mercury is retrograde, are simply because we feel like there's so much going on that if we don't do it now, if we don't sign it now, if we don't say it now, we're never going to get a chance. So it's a good time to just cool our jets and to realize that it may take us longer to get that purple Porsche that we've wanted because this one may have a problem and we may not find out that problem until we get it home, unless we can make an arrangement to drive it around for a day or two before we buy it. So Mercury turns retrograde um, December 29th. On the same day, actually just an hour before the moon moves into Aries. Now remember, Jupiter has just moved into Aries a week ago. Um, and now the moon moves into Aries um, at 2.36 a.m., and that's on Thursday, the 29th. And at 4.11 a.m., just a couple of hours later, the moon catches up to Jupiter. Now, granted, this is middle of the night for some people, but it may be worth getting up for. Why? To make a wish list, to state your intentions, to do something that in some way catches that energy of the moon lining up with Jupiter. And even if you're an hour or two or three or five hours late and you do it first thing in the morning, you can still catch that growing energy. It doesn't have to be at the exact moment of the conjunction, but with uh, the moon in Aries, there's that sense of wanting to take a risk and do something new. 
And what's really exciting is on that same day, again, just another hour or so later, Mercury now retrograde backs into Venus. So we have kind of a weird deal with Venus and Mercury that have been moving together for weeks. But Mercury, which is normally way faster than Venus and will separate away from a conjunction to Venus, that Mercury joined up with Venus last week and then it stopped <laughs> it to go retrograde. And now it's retrograde joining up with Venus again. And so this is also a tremendous period of time for being able to give voice, Mercury, even though it's retrograde, to what it is we want, to our desires, to our needs. And this is still all on Thursday, Mercury turning retrograde, the moon moving into Aries, the moon joining up with Jupiter, making it even bigger, and Mercury as its stationary retrograde, hanging out with Venus, um, and, and both that Mercury and Venus um, making a square and a half to Mars. Something doesn't feel quite right as to how we're going to make it happen. We don't need to make everything happen that we want but we can still give it voice. That's the important thing here. Then on Friday, December 30th, um, the sun moves into a quincunx to Mars. Oh, I don't know, is it? Do we? I don't want the year to end, or I'm not ready. Um, taxes isn't right. Um, this isn't right. Um, the New Year's Eve party that I was going to have, I'm not ready for it. I don't want to go. There's something here with the Sun Quincunx Mars um, that's basically saying, um, I'm irritated, I'm annoyed, I don't want to party. Um, yes, I get that this is a big party day or getting ready for it, um, but it's just, it's, it's just something isn't quite going right. And I may get into an argument with someone that's an irrelevant, unimportant argument that blows up in, in, into something that then leads us to Saturday, which is New Year's Eve day. See, there we can do that, right? That's New Year's Eve day. Um, and, um, and on Saturday, we start off very early in the morning with some moon squares. The moon in Aries is making squares to the planets in, um, in Capricorn, uncomfortable. Um, but then the moon at 9.08 a.m. Pacific time, the moon moves into Taurus. The moon loves being in Taurus, especially for a party day, because it gives us the stability to relax and to be able to enjoy ourselves. Um, in fact, by midday, that moon is forming a semi-sextile to Jupiter, which again is a connection to that kind of buoyancy and the optimism and the overdoing. Um, and yet, by as evening approaches, we realize that everything is a bit more serious than it seems, because um, because as the evening approaches, we have Venus moving into a conjunction with Pluto, end of Capricorn. You remember Venus um, it, it, at the end of Capricorn. Venus will move into Aquarius on January second. I mean, that's that's just a couple of days away. Um, and Pluto will move into Aquarius in March. That's just a couple of months away. And so we're at the very tail end of that Capricorn energy, that energy about structure and stability and, and, and making things work. And Venus joining up with Pluto on New Year's Eve, it's not necessarily anti-party. It's just anti-meaningless party. It doesn't want to just go out and drink and make noise and and be distracted. Venus conjunct Pluto wants to get to the meat of it. It wants to get to the nitty gritty. It wants to get it, it, it wants to find that jugular vein of emotional intimacy or of meaning for life. And so all I can say is that if you're thinking about playing or partying on New Year's Eve, Put something together that is serious. It doesn't mean it can't be fun. In fact, it can be more fun and meaningful than anything else. But Venus conjoining Pluto on New Year's Eve, and it's exact at 9.24 p.m. Pacific time. So it's 11, 12, it's just after midnight on the East Coast. 
in Hawaii, it's a little bit earlier in the evening still. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't put something together that supports the, your desire for the level of intensity and meaning, you will end up being dis disappointed. So going out of the year is a very interesting thing because that Venus Pluto basically says, I'm taking this more seriously than I normally take a New Year's Eve. I want to use this as a marker, as a separation for what was, as, as a um, heading into what will be. For those people who do New Year's resolutions, they may be more, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they may, may be more, they, they may attack it in a more serious and respectful manner than normally than just making, than just making a, a list. And that brings us up to Monday, January 1st. Um, is that Sunday, January 1st? Um, it is Sunday, January 1st, which is still within our week. And so I, I don't think I would get paid if I didn't talk about that last day of the week, um, because um, the, the moon um, is still in Taurus um, all through, um, all through uh, Sunday, January 1st. Um, and that's a good day to laze around. Hey, the moon will be trining the sun, moon in Taurus, sun in Capricorn. Um, and, uh, you know, this can be a really lazy day, except for the fact that by two o'clock in the afternoon, 1.52 p.m. actually, um, Pacific time, the moon moving through Taurus catches up with Uranus in Taurus, and it might want a little bit of action. And when I say a little bit of action, it just wants to go do something. It wants to turn something upside down. It wants to, you know, go out and, and take a walk. It wants to go shy. It, it, it just needs something. It needs something mid-afternoon. And then it settles back down again. And by evening, Mercury is making that sextile to Neptune. We talked about that earlier because Mercury did it on a direct and now it's doing it on a retrograde. And again, we're back in fantasy land and so it's almost like on New Year's, let's see, this is not New Year's Eve day. This is New Year's Day Eve. No, no, no. This is New Year's Day. This is, but I know, but we're, but it's in the evening that I want to talk about it. Oh. So the night, the night before New Year's Day is New Year's Eve. Right. And that evening is New Year's Eve Eve. Right. On New Year's Day, that evening is New Year's Day <laughs> exactly there you go i you think i'm it. correct language wise yes. here yes. regardless on sunday january 1st as we get closer and closer to the evening as mercury backs closer and closer into that sextile with neptune it's almost like we can get more involved in the dreams and the wishes and the fantasies that we would have liked to have on new year's eve but the seriousness of Pluto Venus wouldn't let us. Now we get to go there. Rick, everything that you've shared illustrates that we are in new territory. I don't, I can't remember a end of year holiday forecast with this much a celebratory kind of party energy, but but I'm getting what you're saying. It, it's not just frivolous partying. It's it's reconsidering our traditions and, and upgrading them. It's actually making intentions that we're going to keep. You know, there's a seriousness around it. It's having a party, but having it, you know, have some sort of depth to it and have some sort of, um, you know, going beyond the surface. So it, but at the same time, there is a lot of let's party. Let's, let's do the things that we, yeah, yeah there is. we want to do around the holidays, which I feel like for the last few years, we haven't really been able to do because the energy has been so different. Yeah, so I, I, I agree with that completely. And again, you know, this is setting the stage for in January when Mercury and then eventually Venus and then eventually the sun all move out of Capricorn into Aquarius. They'll all catch up with Saturn and Aquarius it's another round of review and of heaviness and of seriousness. But once they're on the other side and they're moving on into Pisces and then they're moving into Aries, Jupiter's in Aries, Chiron's in Aries. And there's and 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 then right behind that, you know, Saturn is going to move out of 
Aquarius into Pisces, and then we'll get a taste when Pluto in March also moves out of Capricorn into Aquarius. These are bigger changes that are much longer scale changes than the pressures that we've been dealing with that are more focusing the big changes onto now. Now yeah. we're getting to focus the now onto a longer trajectory. Mm, wow. I can't think of a better astrologer to help us usher in the new year, oh. to help orient us into uh, this new time that we're going into. I mean, there's such, such, it's so nice that we've had continuity with you because you really have walked us through via the cosmic connection, which is the other show that we do on the podcast together. You've walked us through the months and months and months since March of 2020. And so to be at this and place, for some of those months, we didn't really march through them. We just trudged along in the same place. It's like, what's did. new? Nothing. We're still here. What's I know new? nothing. We're still here. What do you and see next month? Is it getting better? It may seem like really. it is, but it's not, you know, I mean, and it just, it just kind of went on like that for forever. I remember you saying many times to our community, just hang in there. Like it is really hard right now, but don't give up, keep going, keep, you know, just it, it's, it's going to be okay eventually, but right now is really hard and just keep going. Winston so, Churchill said, when walking through hell, keep going. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think a lot of people would agree that it, it has felt like that on many levels and it's really, really nice to be in this new, it just, it feels new. It feels there's like a sparkliness to the energy that we haven't had for a or lightness, you know, just like a, okay, we're, we're, we're on to something else, which is great. So Rick, thank you very much for being here with us as we move into the new year. Thank you for covering two weeks, not just one. And just so you all it just know, seemed we, like a, it just seemed like one long week. <laughs> it was one long week for sure. Um, but we will not be releasing a new episode that last week in December. We are actually going to take some time off, which is something that we rarely do here at Astrology Hub. But we will. We wanted to make sure you were covered, even though we're going to take a little time off. So that's why Rick generously volunteered to do two weeks instead of one. And um, I'm just grateful to be here with all of you. Thank you for being with us, whether or not you came into our communities at some point during this year, or you've been hanging out with us for years, we're very, very grateful for you and your presence and your curiosity and interest in astrology. And thanks for cho choosing us as a place where you come to for, for insight and guidance and inspiration. So we love you. Thank you, Rick. You're the best. Thank you so much for the old acquaintances, whatever that is. May old acquaintance be forgot. Why? That's kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> let's not. Let's let's sing your Christmas carols instead, Rick. Maybe right. maybe on another episode. Here's here's to the future. Here it here's to it. Thanks everybody for being here. Happy solstice, happy holidays, and we will see you in 2023. Take care, everyone. <laughs>